Hello and welcome to Jesse James Beads. My name is Jem and I'm broadcasting to you from the United Kingdom. I hope that you have had a beautiful day thus far. It's 5pm here in England. I'm guessing that makes it noon on the East Coast and sometime in the morning for everywhere else. I hope you've had a good one so far. Let me know that you are there. Give me a quick hello or something to make sure that I'm not Billy No Mates talking to myself, which is entirely possible. I hope you've had a good one. Let me know what you've been up to. Today we're going to be working with a bead mix called Light Academia. Now both the light and the dark academia mixes are absolutely stunning. If you like something a little bit different, a little bit dramatic, but backed up as ever with oodles of crystals and metallics, cool spaces, and something a little bit funky, then this might be the one for you. Let's pop down to the board and have a look at some of the things that you get in the Light Academia mix, and also take a look at the project we're going to work up today. So this is what we're going to make together. It's a long drop pendant with an optional bead dropper on the bottom. I've added in some two millimeter round thunder polish. This color is called Cola and I think it goes really nicely with the bead mix. Now your light academia comes in a pillow like so. I call them pillows, I don't know what they're actually called, but you know, who knows, they could be called anything. Let's just have a look and see if I can see you there. Let's just make sure that the speakers are not on. And drop me a quick hello if you can indeed see me. I have got some fellows hanging out with me today. Amazing, Celia from Lancashire, hello to you. Donna is in, Helen is in. Happy Saturday, Gem, says Liz. Hope you are well from Southeast Michigan on a beautiful 73 degree summer day. 73 sounds absolutely perfect. LV is in. Hello, my lovely. Anne is in from California, where it's still quite early, I imagine. Monica is in too. Hello to you, my darlings. Always good to have your company. So what we're looking at is a pillow worth of beads. It's a pillow pack and it's absolutely rammed to the edges absolutely fill to the brum to the brum to the brim don't know what the brum is never mind so this is what we're going to be making today which is a long drop pendant a uh, hello from virginia says angela prudence is in from north carolina donna's in from michigan and charlene is all the way down from florida so what we're going to do is learn the base technique how to add an additional charm to the bottom and you could if you wanted to be super dramatic add one of these incredibly detailed long drop it's like a cage you've got a large aperture at either end let me see if i can line that up yeah you can see how large the aperture is in this piece there is a link in the video description, Helen giving you direct access to the Light Academia mix. So you, they had availability before I came to air, hopefully if you rush, if you can see the video description, you should be able to hop on and order yourself one of these straight away. You actually get two of these in the mix. Let's talk about the jewellery in a minute, let's talk about the mix first. That's what we're working with, Light Academia. There is a Dark Academia as well, which is equally is beautiful so you get a pair of these incredibly detailed I think of them as filigree florals I'm sure they have a specific name that Sarah has created for them I don't know what that is you also get these absolutely outstanding spacer beads I say spacer beads they're huge absolutely vast beautiful you get like I don't want to kind of put words into your mouth but I think of it as a steampunk ladybug who knew? It opens up. So if you are into your aromatherapy, what you can do is grab yourself a slightly absorbent material, such as a lava stone, pop a little bit of essential oil on there, close that back up, and you can carry that around all day and inhale whatever beautiful fragrance you desire. You also get the sweater beads, which are incredibly cool. And when I first got hold of the Light Academia mix earlier on in the year, do you know what it made me think of? geography teachers elbows now i know that's very specific but if you went to school in the 80s or the 90s you may have experienced a geography teacher or tutor who wore a blazer with woolen patches stitched on donna is agreeing with the steampunk yep a little bit steampunky on that one that's got quite steampunky vibes magic vibes so you get two of the slightly smaller and one of the absolutely huge sweater beads and then you get all of these as well 
these are incredibly cool I love the detailing on these and what I love is when you get what's essentially an antique copper and an antique bronze in the same mix I love mixing metals anyway love mixing metal colors at the best of times but that's spectacular you've also got crystals You've got a variety of colourways from transparent with an AB coating. You've got saucer beads. You've got huge humongous bead caps. You've got these gorgeous red, which are also half coated. So you've got all of those, plus the pieces that I used to make today's drop pendant with. Now, I adore this bead mix, and I've chosen to work with these. You even get... I wonder if that fits inside the steampunk ladybug hold on let me see if i can open it back up i've um been working with wire all day today and therefore my fingertips are no longer feeling <laughs> so you can open that up if you need to with a little bit of assistance let's see oh my gosh it's like somebody thought about it it's like somebody thought about it. So you do get a lava bead in this mix. Thank you for that link, Lizzie. That's very helpful, much appreciated. So if you wanted to get yourself over to jessiejamesbeads.com, you can grab one of these as well. So you do get lava beads in the mix if you want to go for that essential oil in a carrier. It's quite tricky. Some people are very sensitive to oil. So having something which keeps that away from the skin is miraculous. Really, really handy. So steampunk ladybug. You've got two of those and you've got your sweater beads as well. So it's quite a big mix. It's absolutely rammed full when you get the little plastic pillow. These are the ones that we're going to be working with today. I also chose to add in some of these two millimeter thunder polish beads now i've got a strand called cola just here which to all intents and purposes is like a nice deep cognac amber color these are the tiny two millimeter thunder polish strands multiples available on the site different colors whatever you think will work this is a really good one because it works with so many different colorways Teresa has joined us from Tampa where it's 76 degrees that sounds delightful that sounds like the right number of degrees so I'm just going to pop a few of those into the lid of my pot for later on again you don't have to add in the thunder polish if you don't fancy it but that's what I've chosen to do and I will show you the technique just in case that's what you would like to do too now I'm working with two gauges of wire today so the main project is going to be made with 18 gauge round wire. I'm working with raw copper for two reasons. One, it shows up nicely on the camera. Two, I love it. <laughs> I love how it tarnishes by my very touch. It will become slightly darker. Humans exude oils from their skin, which can tarnish metals which is why you may find if you've got some old estate silver jewellery it will blacken after being worn and then stored so you can easily polish it back out if you want to lizzie says pretty thank you helen says that's so cool it really is and sherby is in if i've mispronounced your name i'm terribly sorry so these are the beads that i've chosen to work with if you have a mix with you that's what we're going to be creating with you could swap out the bit on the bottom for one of the extra extra beautiful filigree drops if you want to but i'm saving these because there's such a huge aperture let me try and line that up such a huge aperture through there you could almost get a two millimeter i don't know what that is that's probably like an eight gauge or something ridiculous you could get a really heavy wire through there if you wanted to maybe not an eight gauge i don't know what the gauge is for a two millimeter wire ah oh, bless you thank you Shelby. i appreciate that so this is what we're going to make your beading on the edge here is completely optional it's just a nice way to highlight work and um, i think so, i think lizzie popped a link on for you if you go to the video description there is a direct link to this mix that's what it looks like on the website if you imagine all of the beads festooned inside this pillow that's what you will get uh, you could use nice leather through those larger drops you absolutely could you've got loads of choices it's always exciting to me when you get a beads or spacers with a super sized drill hole so hopefully you will find a use for that somewhere i as i said earlier i really like mixing metals but i've gone for kind of all copper today but adding that in with that almost like a an antique brass rather than uh, sorry did i say brass brass bronze 
not entirely sure it's more brassy than anything else or you've also got the red copper antique red copper you've got lots of choices for mixing your colors up whichever beads you fancy using you can mix them around margaret is in from gorgeous edinburgh i hope you're doing well sweet thank you so much for joining us so this is what we're going to crack on with today i'm going to pop that up to the top and we're going to bring in some wire so i am working as i mentioned with 18 gauge round wire now raw copper is quite soft i'm just off screen at the moment because i'm unspooling a long length of wire raw copper is quite soft and it acts as a, a soft or a light temper wood if you wanted to make this with a medium temper such as a german style wire it's absolutely going to work perfectly all you need to do is pre-warm your wire and i'll show you how to do that now so what i do i've got probably about 15 inches which is too much but whatever we're left over with at the end of this first half i will use to create this little dropper on the bottom so i'm going to grip one end of my length of wire as i said about 15 inches maybe and I'm going to pull that really quite firmly between thumb and forefinger and I'm putting a lot of intention into that getting the wire nice and smooth so you can see it's much shinier than it was a second ago when I cut it from the reel it's also softer and warmer and ready to work for us so we are going to start with a wrapped loop and we're going to start with that up at the top so the first wrapped loop you need to make has got to be large enough for your chosen chain to go through i was working with a chain earlier let me just grab it over it's just a very simple piece of beading chain that i use for uh, popping pendants on when i'm in a hurry to display them but what you'll see is you've got quite large beads on here so therefore if you make your loop up at the top too small you won't be able to get a large chain through so all i'm saying is consider what you want to hang your pendant on when you're making the size of the bale aperture so i'm just putting a little bit of extra warmth in there because it's slight crankly on the end eight gauge is 3.2 oh my goodness no I, um eight gauge would not go through then <laughs> I really should have a little notice up in front of me telling me the gauges. I know that 1.6 millimetres is 14 gauge, and that's as far as I remember. Margaret says it's cold like autumn over in Edinburgh. So because I want to make quite a large aperture for multiple chain sizes up at the top, I'm going to come about two inches from one end, put a right angle on, and then I'm going to make a large shape up at the top now i'm grabbing in some multi-step bail makers if you have the two-step they're perfect if you don't you can use the fattest part of your round nose pliers or you can use a slender pen or pencil or a piece of dowel whatever you have really that's going to work so i think we'll go for step number four today so you've seen me do wrapped loops about a million and one times the way i teach it is a two-step process we make a shepherd's crook first and then we pop the wire back around that tine on your pliers we'll wrap the wire all the way around so you've got a nice large shape at this juncture if you wanted to you could test whether the clasp and the chain will go through what i'm looking for is for the round form on the end of my core wire to be pretty much centralized if it isn't you can ooch it over just a little bit just a little tweak like so and then i'm going to squish on just the round section like so give it a bit of work hardening and then i'm going to draw that tail around one and a half times like so well it's two times now and i'm just going to tighten that up a little bit by pressing my pliers underneath that coil and above that coil now i'm going to leave that straight for the moment because i haven't decided if i want to put two coils up at the top what i will do is i'll just smush that ever so slightly so it's going up and away i can decide whether i want to use it or not later i'm then going to make sure that my long strand of wire is as straight as it can be for now and i'm then going to load on my beads with the smallest at the top now if you want to put the biggest at the top or you want to have whatever order you'd like please please change the order please mess around with different bead mixes once you've learnt the technique it's a lovely one to play with i'm just saying that the first bead on is the one that you want at the top so let's add on another couple of beads shall we there's that lovely huge lava bead and then we're going to add in this very beautiful did you see the color switch there on one side it's coated in a very shiny still it's almost like a black diamond 
almost like a black diamond it's almost like a graphite but high shine color let me just make sure that everything is still working over here oh monica i think is possibly somewhere rainy because she's put a little emoji of a mouse swimming through the rain so perhaps that's a weather report so on one side you've almost got the black diamond colorway flip it over and you've got my favorite color it's purple i love it absolutely love it and there we go so i'm going to pop that one on next all the way down and then i'm going to add on my fourth bead from the main section of our piece that we're working on together and uh, this one could almost be a very high grade citrine the color is beautiful and as you come towards the edges it darkens it's really gorgeous an absolutely beautiful bead to work with a bird almost just flew into my window forgive me if i was distracted for a second i'm very glad to report he's fine let's pop that fourth bead in in the line now the next thing that we need to do is for one thing let's have an awareness that we're working with treated glass crystals we don't want to put too much pressure on these we want to treat them with a great deal of respect and what i'm doing is i'm allowing a small gap between each of those beads about the same kind of size as if I wanted to put one pass of wire between each bead and a little space up at the top. So I'm allowing a gap to occur to make sure that when I start twisting this wire around in a moment, we won't have any dramas. We won't have too much pressure going on against the glass crystal. So when I have got those all lined up and I'm happy, I'm just going to pinch firmly down at the bottom, then they can start sliding around because I know that I've left space between those to allow me to bring some wire between them in a couple of minutes hello to you too sandy big hugs and uh, welcome to today's live now what we're going to do next is create this small loop down at the bottom and the reason i've made a small loop is because i can then add in anything i want later on but i don't want it to be too showy now it doesn't really matter when you're working with a three-dimensional briolette cut like this stone like this uh, crystal bead rather hello to you my loves it's lovely to have your company thanks for hanging out with us today it doesn't matter what orientation the uh, loops go in if you're working with a flat bead you might want to think about the orientation of that second loop i'm going to bring the wire up towards me so that it's in the same orientation as my bale up at the top i'm then going to use my round nose pliers let's just move those beads out the way because i sense that they're going to get uh, sent all over the place in just a moment so we're looking at this sideways at the moment if i pop that down you'll see there's our bale up at the top greetings from vermont sounds like a wonderful place uh is that up in the top right i want to say uh, my geography is not absolutely wonderful so forgive me if i've found the wrong area <laughs> welcome to today's live my lovely so we're going to create a very small wrapped loop down at the bottom and the reason i'm making a small one is because it only needs to have the same wire come through as we've already used so as long as you've got a gap for something the same diameter as this which is 18 gauge that's all that we need so the same technique two positions we've used to get that small loop and then we're just going to tie that around one time so i'm making sure that that's centralized and i'm happy with the shape you can see that against my finger and i'm going to whiz that wire all the way around one and a half times and i'm just going to make sure that it's going sideways so this is the final orientation of the pendant because we've got that bale up at the top and that needs to be at 90 degrees to the table so that you can put your threading material through it i'm just going to tighten this up ever so slightly and the way i'm going to do that is protecting the beads obviously i'm just going to scooch those little coils around so that they're a little bit tighter now for the first bead you've got two options with how you can proceed here you don't have to add in those small two millimeter fire polish beads like i have here this colorway is called cola and they are two mil thunder polish beads 
they come in a variety of colours. I think there's at least five or six colours. I could be wrong. I don't know the entire contents of the vault. <laughs> uh, Vermont borders New York to the right. Perfect. I, I, I got it right. Go me. <laughs> so what you can do is you can create this lovely smooth arc that skirts around the edge of this absolutely fabulous bead and you don't have to add these little faceted rounds in if you don't want to so it's an option looks nice either way now i'm going to show you how to complete the whole segment before i add the beads in but you do have the option to add the beads in at this juncture it's mildly easier however because we're going to leave space you can turn this large faceted flat bead sideways and it will still be just as easy what you need to do is just be aware not to bring the next shape we're about to make too close to this large faceted bead let me just put that up in the corner hopefully you can still see that all okay so i'm going to pinch quite firmly with my non-dominant hand while i get some warmth into the tail of wire that's coming away on the right hand side and i do want it to be super toasty warm what i'm going to do is again be aware of my bead i don't want to put any pressure on the beads they are too precious so i'm going to start by smoothing the wire around and if you really do get that nice and warm it works for you and i'll show you what i mean i'm just going to very very gently give that a really good wiggle and then the wire will just create a really nice shape the more you work with wire the more you'll be able to gauge how much pressure you need to put on things to get it where you want it to go so i'm just going to draw that down ever so slightly and just play with it until it sits how i want it to now my wire has come over the top from the coil just here and for the first move i'm going to take the wire over the top again the reason i choose to do that is if you want to add your beads they will all sit at the same distance from the eye they will all sit at the same height near to the surface of this faceted large flat bead it just is an attention to detail it looks beautiful if you accidentally take the wire underneath by mistake it really doesn't matter i just try to give you as many options as possible so that you can make it how you envisage it so i'm just going to bring that wire around little by little i'm making very small movements and i'm not making anything too jerky it's small and fluid movements and what we're looking to do is to give a nice swoosh around the outside of this largest flat faceted bead and we're going to wrap around the core wire all the way over the top underneath and back in the same direction so it's basically one circuit of the core wire the core wire is the one that goes up inside all of those beads so what i need to do to ensure that i don't shrink this size is pinch this very firmly just like so so what i'm doing is i'm not putting much pressure on the bead where the pressure is going is just here on the wire as it passes above the core before we start wrapping and putting the pressure there means that this distance this arc shape doesn't shrink if it shrinks too much it can sit too close against the bead so we're going to give that a nice hearty hold whilst we take the wire all the way around one time now what can sometimes happen when you're making this spiral is that it gets a little bit loose and we'd quite like it to be nice and firm so i'm making sure that both sets of beads either side are out of the way of my pliers and i'm just going to give that a, a little gentle tighten and then i'm going to flatten it down and what you'll see is i'm using the curved side against this bead here to prevent any accidental ouchies with the wire so what i'm going to do in a change to the piece that i made beforehand this one the wire's gone over the top all the way around underneath and back out the other side I'm going to show you an alternative so what will happen if you want to recreate this precise piece is that your wire will go around underneath again and then come out underneath skirt around the next bead up and then coil move around the next bead coil move around the next bead i quite fancy having the wires on the side instead of being on the right as they are in the demonstration piece I quite fancy having them on the left but if you wanted the same thing we would take this wire underneath and bring it sticking out on the right hand side of that bead so it's up to you i just fancy doing two different designs so you can pick your favorite technique again i'm pinching very firmly with my non-dominant hand to hold that section steady i'm putting a lot of heat into this piece 
because I now want it to do a lovely smooth swoosh around the next bead. I think this is one of my favourite colourways on a bead ever. It's gorgeous. So I'm going to again support the bead carefully, making sure there's a teeny tiny gap between the wire and the bead. As I bring the tail of wire, now it's come over the top, so I'm going to bring the wire tail underneath now. So again, if I've warmed that elegantly enough, the wire will simply create that nice swoosh. So you can alter that slightly if you need to. Just drawing that over the top. I think that looks really pretty, switching sides. So I'm again, I'm going to pinch very firmly on the wire here, whilst I draw the tail all the way around and back out the other side. Now you have the option, you can bring that in the opposite direction, or you can flip that wire over the top and continue on the right hand side. I think I'm going to do a switch. I'm going to go right, left, right, left. So you've got options. Every time I've created a finished circle around that core bead, I'm going to tighten up the little coil that I've made, warm the next section, and then draw it from the back this time, all the way around the side of that lava bead. Let's make sure that you can see that in the light. If I turn that upside down, should be easier for you to see, I won't get my hand in the way. So the wire has trailed from the top, around the side to the top, over the top and then underneath, all the way around, underneath, and we're going to bring it to the top this time. So I'm going to hold that firmly, draw the tail all the way around, and then for the last time, I'm going to draw that wire all the way around and wrap it off at the top. Now I've got two sections of wire here that I could use to make a coil. I'll just pop that to one side for a hot second. So in my demonstration piece, I had one coil which I cut away, one, sorry, one tail of wire which I cut away, and one which I turned into a coil to put over the front of the bale, so it almost hides the bale and when you string that on something it looks quite magical because it looks like your whole pendant is dripping down from a coil of wire. So you've got choices, you don't have to have coils up at the top, you could have a super neat tidy pendant with no little coils whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is trim one of these pieces away. If you do have a tail of wire when you make your first wrapped loop, if you think back to when we made this wrapped loop as a bale at the top, leave it until the end and then you've got choices as to what you want to do. So I'm going to trim away the shorter of the two. Always look twice before you press that button and cut. And when I say press that button I simply mean close the flush cutters. So there's a tiny bit of wire that's sticking up just here. So I'm going to use the rounded side of my pliers and just get that sit down nice and flush. And then I'm going to finish off with the tail of wire I have remaining. I'm going to wrap that over the top of the first little wrapped loop coil we made. And I think for this one, we haven't got very much wire left, to be honest. So I think I'm just going to take that around a second time and this one can have no coils, no extras. It doesn't need it. It's a beautiful pendant design with lots of swooshes. You can always add a little extra wire if you want to. And I'm just very carefully tightening those up so that the end is flush. And if I do this with my hand, there's no scratching. And you know, if there's no scratching here, it's much less likely to catch on your hair or clothes or whatever. So you've got a nice big space down at the bottom. You've got mobile jewelry, so you can spin that around if you really wanted to. This is where we're going to add in the optional beads Again, these are two millimetre thunder polish. The colour I've chosen to work with is cola. I really enjoy it. It looks a little bit like a cognac amber. Now the wire I'm going to work with is a 22 gauge in the UK. That's equivalent to 0.6 mil. I'm just off camera grabbing myself a good 12 inches or so of that 22 gauge. And what we're going to do is just cut the end away because it's a little bit ragged where I used it to stop the wire unspooling. And when you get slightly finer wires, if it was a heavier wire, I'd warm it and I'd smooth it and we'd be able to use it. But because it's a slightly lighter wire, it can become brittle and a little bit stabby. So I just want to get rid of it. So I'm not going to show you how to thread all of these on because it's very dull watching me put beads on wire. Uh, because I can't really see what I'm doing if I'm completely honest and it could take a long time. So I'm going to show you how to add the finer gauge wire. Again, this is 22 gauge, around about 12 inches. And I'm going to hook this on right down at the bottom of our design that we're working together. If I lay the whole thing over the top, 
push the tail around and underneath. Now what you can do, because we left loads of space either side of this large flat faceted bead, we've got space to move the bead out of the way so that we don't scratch it as we're adding our wire and beads on. So it's easier for me to show you with pliers. I tend to do this when I'm working uh, by myself. I tend to do this bit with my fingers, but if I get my fingers in there, you won't be able to see what's happening. So I'm coiling the wire, the finer wire, all the way around on. And I like to think of this as wiring on or casting on. If you're a knitter, you'll know what I'm on about. So it doesn't matter if it goes underneath or over the top. I'm just going to push that around until I get a really nice, neat coil of wire. Now, when I'm adding on with a 22 gauge, you will need to see at least three wraps on this little coil. Thank you so much, Margaret. That's very kind of you. You'll need to have at least three wraps or coils around your swooshy bit to make sure that it's nice and safe. Fewer than three coils will give you a point of weakness and if you accidentally catch one of those fine beads it can be a little bit destructive to your jewellery. It might ping undone and then you might lose some more pieces. What we need to do is scooch that all the way down to the bottom. Even though I tightened those coils up that should still be reasonably mobile. Now my finer gauge wire is underneath at the moment, it's coming underneath that lovely swoosh and what I'm going to do is add on a bead. And let's see if I can see the hole in the bead. You can probably see it before me, so I'm just going to do probably one or two of these otherwise it will take forever. So you'll see that even though these beads are just two millimetres, they fit on this 22 gauge wire perfectly. What you do need to be aware of is you're working with a slightly heavier fine wire. Normally one would work with a 26 gauge equivalent to 0.4 in the UK and that's quite light and soft and it won't harm beads. So you just need to be aware that you're working with a slightly heavier wire here so you need to be really protective of those little beads which is why I've hidden it underneath my nail. I bring the tail of my lighter gauge wire up let's just turn that sideways and through the gap between the bead and the swoosh I'm just going to support that underneath as I draw it all the way around and then allow that to pull through. What I want to happen is for that small thunder polish bead to sit outside the swoosh. So I'm protecting the bead with my nail and then I'm going to wrap another couple of times around that swooshy bit. Now because I started off with four wraps I would be inclined to do four wraps between each bead. You don't have to as long as you've got a minimum of three to add on and you'll need at least one to use the technique. You could do whatever you want but it looks really really pretty and attention to detail if you use the same number of wraps. So I'm going to give that a fourth wrap now. Uh, Joyce says, warming the wire has been the best tip ever. I'm glad you say it so much. It's such a great reminder. <laughs> Bless your heart. I'm so sorry I do repeat myself. But the way I like to think of it is it's possible I'm teaching wire to somebody who has never, ever used wire before. And whilst you might get sick of me going on about the same thing, I, I do believe that everybody has the right to learn from the beginning. So I'm taking that end of the wire through the swoosh for the last time holding on to that bead for dear life and then I'm just going to use my nails to tighten the wire coils up now because I don't want to damage any of those beads. So you would simply repeat with beads all the way around. Like I said it takes me quite a while to get the beads on the wire so I'm not going to repeat. Oh Margaret you're so lovely thank you darling. So just repeat with those little two mil beads if you fancy adding them on. Let's bring the demonstration piece back in and you can see what it looks like when you do add them on. For this one, I went for three wraps between each bead. And again, this was from the front to the front down at the bottom because you get the same facet sparkling all the way along. So the last thing that I'm going to teach you on today's tutorial is how to add on that little drop down at the bottom. So if you imagine, please, that we have gone all the way around and we've added all of these beads into position, what I'm going to do is just tidy that wire out of the way for now so that it doesn't hit my hand. As I mentioned earlier, you could choose whatever bead you fancied. If you want a really long drop, if you have a very elegant uh, piece of jewellery in mind, you could add multiple pieces. 
Uh, lovely piece, says Liz. You're very kind. Thank you, Liz. Uh, please don't apologise for saying it so much. I meant it as a compliment. I appreciate that and I understood that you did. It just makes me quite self-conscious that perhaps I am going on a bit. <laughs> so, oh, I've got the wrong wire. What I need now is another small length of 18 gauge. Now, if you wanted to, you could work with a slightly heavier wire, especially if you're using a lovely soft piece like this raw copper. I'm just going to cut off another two inches or so off the 18 gauge. If you missed earlier on, um, it's round raw copper. It acts like a soft or a light temper wire. Let's clear the board a little bit. These things can go out of the way. That looks tidier, doesn't it? So the reason I use this is because it is nice and fluid. You could use a slightly heavier wire. If you are working with a medium temper, such as German or a, a standard beading wire or a jewellery craft wire, just keep warming it and you'll be absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. Celia's been away at a retreat this week in an absolutely delightful part of, I want to say Lincolnshire. Uh, kept recommending warming the wire when we were making the rings and bead wrapping absolutely especially when you make the lovely rose ring which I'm going to make for you guys very very soon so even though we're making quite a small charm right now I'm still going to warm the wire so gripping hold of one end and I'm always conscious to open my fingers and thumbs apart as I go for the return journey if you don't it can be quite painful if you accidentally catch the wire in the pad of your digits on the way back up so make sure that you're opening your fingers and thumbs as you go so that that's nice and smooth but your fingers remain unsullied so round nose pliers to make a little coil down at the bottom and in a change to creating a wrapped loop i'm going to add this on with an open and closable or simple loop so we're going to start with the coil so let's grip hold of the end of that wire my hands are quite warm, so uh, <laughs> they're going to slip off a little bit. And what we're going to do with the round nose plies is create a little bit of a round form to get going. Once we've got that round form, I'm going to grip a hold of that and push the form sideways into the forefinger of my non-dominant hand. So the action here is like this. I'm moving both my finger and the pliers to push that coil into my fingertip pad until I've got a good two coils rotating around so we've got a start point one two circuits once we've got that second circuit i'm just taking that a little bit further what we want to do is change the angle of this tail of wire that's coming away so if i pop my bent chain nose pliers underneath and just grip that at the point that the wire comes away from the circular form i'm going to grip the circular form and twist it sideways now if you're working with 18 gauge soft it's a doddle if you're working with a firmer wire just need to get a little bit of a pinch going on okay so I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and straight and I'm happy with the centralization of the coil I've created I'm going to straighten up this section here when you're working with crystal beads or more delicate gemstone beads making sure that your wire is straight will result in fewer smashages I don't even think that's a word but I'm not I, I just don't care. I, I'm going to use words that I make up. So we've got the disc down at the bottom or the flattened coil. I'm just going to make sure that I'm happy that that's centralised on the end of the pin that I've straightened. And then we're going to introduce whatever bead we fancy. So I've gone for a repeat of the first design that I created, which is this gorgeous, almost a mystic smoky quartz it's uh, known as a briolette cut. Some people refer to it as a briolet. I was taught briolette. And what I'm going to do now is look at the orientation of the lower loop on the piece that we've made together. So this is the way it would need to be worn on the neckline. If you imagine your chain is going through in this orientation, that's how you need to keep it on the desk so that you're always creating your loops in the correct order. So our loop down at the bottom is in the same orientation which is up and away at 90 degrees to the desk. So when I'm making the loop for my briolette, I actually quite want to be able to see the disc down at the bottom. If this was a flat head pin or a ball head pin, it wouldn't really matter. But because I want to be able to see that disc down at the bottom, what I'm going to do now is create a right angle up and away. Uh, I beg your pardon, I almost went wrong then. It's very easy to do. I've got to do my loop sideways. Can you see? Because then it will go through that upright loop down at the base of the pendant we're making together. 
So I'm going to create a sideways loop. I'm going to pop my pliers just above where that briolette bead is. I'm going to pull that carefully sideways and you'll see that my pliers never actually quite touch. If I turn that over a light piece of board, my pliers aren't touching the bead. I'm putting that angle in without putting any stress or pressure into the bead. What we're going to do now is use my round nose pliers to create a single simple loop. And I'm going to make this quite large, not because I think it's aesthetically pleasing, but because it will be easier for you to see. So pop those pliers in and rotate them around. Again, it's the round nose pliers. As if I was making a wrapped loop, I'm going to do that in two stages and then retract those pliers and you'll see that we've got a circular form with a small tail of wire which is excess. If you wanted to make a wrapped loop here, you absolutely can. I wanted to show you something different. So I'm going to snip that end away. Before I attach my charm to the bottom of our long drop pendant, I want to make sure that the simple loop I've made is perfect. It needs to be pretty circular. If it's ever so slightly off, don't worry about it. What you do need to have is the very end of that cut piece of wire touching the angle. So where it was, you created that right angle coming away, whichever orientation you chose to work in. Once that is set and you're happy, you can see there's very, very little amount of space. You probably wouldn't get a piece of paper between the end of the wire and the angle. When you're happy with that shape and form, we're going to give it a lot of strengthening. So opening and closing any flat facing pliers over that loop. And then we're going to treat it like a giant jump ring. So we're going to turn that sideways and open it like so. So you can see we've now got a gap. I'm going to pop that onto the pendant we made together today on the live draw the bead up and away and then we're going to close that exactly like a jump ring so if I get my fingers in the right orientation you should be able to see that closing up excellent that all looked visible to me so I just pop them down on the board you can see the options that you have you can bead or not bead you can alter which side your swooshy bits go on I alternated on this one I kept them all on the right on my original design. I had a little coil up at the top to make almost a floating bale design on the first piece. And on this one, we kept it clean and simple. So what I'll do later is I'll add some more beads on just to this swooshy section, and then I'll pop a photo up later so you can see them side by side. And that is your light academia bead mix. Now with this, I just have to show you what you've got left over. Both of these have been made from a single box. Quite often I'll have one to play with and one to demonstrate with, but this is a single box. I only had one delivered. So everything that you see here is still available even after you've made both of those, which is why I love Jesse James Beads bead mixes, because you get tons in there. It's an almost endless supply. It's not endless, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm still here. I hope that you've had a smashing day so far. I hope that whatever it is you're doing, you're enjoying it. I hope that you're as well as you possibly can be, given your personal circumstances. And I want to thank you for taking the time to hang out with me. My name is Jem. I'm here for Jesse James Beads. Today we've worked with Light Academia Bead Mix plus two millimetre thunder polish in cola. Cola. It's a beautiful colour. Honestly, it's a bit like a cognac um, amber. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. And I've got tons of them off the one strand, so they're really, really lovely. Uh, I love your dishes too. Do you know what? This one was a pound in a really inexpensive shop, and I painted it. It was a lotus blossom, plain white candle holder. And it was so tatty, half of the paint had come off it. And I just went around with some craft paint that I'd watered down and put a bit of glitter on it. Because, you know, who doesn't love glitter, am I right? But thank you. That's very kind of you, Joyce. Thank you very much. I hope you've had fun. I really, really have. It's a beautiful, beautiful bead mix. If you didn't see at the beginning, in the video description, I dropped a link for this particular bead mix. It's available at the jessiejamesbeads.com site at the moment. We will see what happens going forwards if I can convince Sarah to bring it to the UK shop. You never know, it might happen. Any road, I will be back with you next week. Oh, I'm going to show you one of the additional pieces I made with what we're working with next week. Very, very simple bracelet, just with some of the beads from my bead mix. I'm going to make with you 
a mermaid tail pendant. I've also got a bracelet and some earrings from the very same bead mix. So that's the uh, Let's Be Mermaids. I think it's called Let's Be Mermaids. Yeah. In Aqua, it's called Splash. If you fancy making along with me next week on the live, get over, find yourself the Let's Be Mermaids in Splash and you can join in. I'll see you next time. Take care, my darlings. Bye for now.